This, my friends, is the um, all-distance pocket ensign folding, I guess you could call it a vest camera, um, that uses 120 film, made by Houghton and Butcher Manufacturing in England, probably in the 1920s. The all-distance comes from the fact that this camera only really has two focusing settings. You can do portraits, and then you can do, they call it, views so uh, nice and simple um, you can take pictures of people and then there's a setting for everything else now although this is a really old camera you know 90 years old the beauty is that it still uses well always uses was used 120 film which is still readily available in color and black and white and um, sort of unlike similar folding cameras of the era it doesn't use 620 which although you can sort out by re-rolling 120 onto different spools you know it's a bit of a pain and it's great that this just uses um, 120 film to start off with now the camera can take eight exposures and on, one, on a roll of 120 and they're six by nine centimeters and the exposure is controlled by a fixed shutter that we have here probably about one one twenty fifth sorry one twenty fifth of a second um which is pretty which is pretty slow isn't it um and um three aperture settings and what it says on the front it says small medium or large which kind of um again approximately uh, like f sixteen f11 and f8 and the great thing about using these old cameras beyond the fact that you're just giving a nice old piece of photographic history a longer life they kind of take us back to more of a uh, simpler time with photography when it's all about just uh, the, the the image and the technicality side of it we don't have to think about well i guess we don't have to think about it with modern cameras do we but but with these you're definitely just relying on one single shutter speed you've got three choices of aperture and obviously you've got your film and then the rest is up to you so i'll tell you what let's have a closer look at how you open it up and get it ready for shooting okay so this is what the ensign all distance looks like in its folded position you can see the uh, red site for looking at uh, where your film is and then We've got the top of it, which you can see the tripod attachment there, and you've got the winder for the film on the side. So to open it, it couldn't really be simpler. Um, to open the main body, that is, to, to get the bellows out, you pop that out there, and then it opens up. And basically the, the camera mechanism, the shutter mechanism, if you like, the lens, come out on these rails. Um, and to get that to happen, what you need to do is you pull on this kind of uh, little shiny chrome knob here gently pull it out you can see it comes out and then what will happen is this little um, clip here which does your distance as well will then engage in one of these two notches that you can probably see there the first notch is kind of for the hyperfocal distance then if you want to take it to the next notch you push on that little lever there push it in and then you can slide the thing out and then not too far and then that will then engage it says in that one this I need to just add a tiny little bit of machine oil just on there to make it making it a little bit um a little bit smoother and there we go and then the camera basically is in its good to go uh, position you move that lever down there and then you can do good shots so let's kind of have a look around at the camera um, if we look at the lens on the front to start off with um, you've got your lens there very simple meniscus type lens and then we've got our shutter there shutter again one one sorry one twenty fifth of a second really slow shutter really really slow shutter and you can either have it on i for instantaneous we can turn that there just a little bit of the way to b and that's bulb where it will stay open until you let it go or then you've got t which is timed is it or something where you you flick it and it'll stay open and you flick it again and it'll stay closed 
you really want it on the instantaneous. Then we've got our aperture setting, and the aperture you might not be able to see on the video. No, you probably won't be able to see, but basically we've got large, medium, and small. And they're not actual blades that are crossing over each other. There's three different discs that come in well, come behind the lens. Small is meant to be around about an f8, medium about an f11, and sorry, large is f8, medium is f11, and small f16 or something remember this is all approximate because there isn't that actually that much information on the internet about these cameras and all the instruction manuals refer to just doing things like you would use um what they say is you would use small for outside and sunshine you'd use medium if it was a little bit cloudy and then you would use the um large hold if you're doing timed uh, uh exposures now to actually compose our shots can you we can just look through this and then you won't be able to see it on the video but you can you can roughly see what you pointed at on a sunny day obviously everything moves the wrong way and then if you want to do sort of a landscape shot you can turn it that way or we can flick up the wire finder and look through and compose our shots that way as well so as you can see it's dead, dead simple to set up um, so I guess what we should really look at next is uh, loading some film into this baby. So let's um, fold it away first. So to fold it away, what you do is you press that button in there, and then you press back on there, and then the thing just flicks back. Oop, I almost forgot to flick the, uh, flick the viewfinder back into its sitting position. And then what you do is you press down on these two bits here. That goes up. We close that and the camera's closed up and are ready to load some film. Right, let's, some lo let's load some film on this baby. Couldn't really be simpler. I'm going to be using Ilford FP4125. So all you've got to do is flick this little bit to one side here and then the whole top of the camera, sorry, the whole back of the camera comes off. I love the fact that you can still see to obtain the best results with this camera, ask for two and a quarter B Ensign Speedy Film made in Great Britain. So let's just put that to one side and we can see the back of the um, bellows. Now, it, I didn't mention it before, but if you do get any holes in your bellows, you can fix them. If you get something like um, some modeler's black matte paint or something, you can paint it on the bellows and it stays fairly flexible or you can use tape or something like that. Um, and hey, light leaks make your photos more artistic anyway. So we can see we've got... Um, our winder ready to go there, that little bit there. And then actually if we undo that, what you can see is that that is actually, oop, and we have to flick this bit out of the way as well, I think. Maybe. Can't remember. Oh yeah, you flick that bit up. And then we get our spool out. Now, always keep your old spools so you can imagine once we've used this film it's wound from there to there we'll have an empty spool which you then transfer into there so let's just um actually you know with 120 film there are a couple of different ways of doing it i think i might actually have a go at doing it an easy way so i've got my 120 film here i've already opened the packet I've just pulled the backing paper off now we'll obviously be very careful with 120 that you don't accidentently let it all unravel because then it'll expose because 120 film you have the backing paper and then you have the film tucked inside. So I'm just going to push this through here so that it kind of grips on like so. And then just turn that around a couple of times so that's nice and grippy. Just going to put that into there. Flick the lock down, pull that back, pop it into there, put the flaps back down, just push that back into there, nice and tight, put the back back on while we remember, round this way. One thing you, you, you must do as well, that I'm not going to show you in this video, but what you'll want to be doing is you probably want to cover this up 
with some just some like um, tape, like some um, electrical tape or something, because modern films are much more sensitive to light than the old ones, and you might find you get leak light uh, leaking through, especially obviously if you're using color film. Then all we want to do now is we just want to wind the camera on until we get our number one appear. It should appear in just a second. Good be careful, it's easy to whiz past it. Oh, we're almost there. Almost there. Here it comes. It's warning is, warning is. One. Actually, I've just gone bloody past it, haven't I? <laughs> anyway, that was the one there. So the camera is now ready to take a picture. So what we can now do is we can now open the front up. And obviously you'd have done that in subdued light, wouldn't you? <laughs> open that up and let's imagine it's going to be a scene that's quite far away. So we're going to have it set to scene. If it was a portrait, we'd have it onto the other one, closer. Um, and now it's it's got a really slow, slow, slow shutter, isn't it? One twenty-fifth uh, of a second. So well, basically when you're outside in the sunshine, when you're shooting with ISO 100 film, what you're going to be shooting at is really with the small aperture. So just set that to small, and then do your composition using the uh, the viewfinder or the wire the wire frame finder, like that. So, and the really important thing, I mean, you may want to use a tripod or something, or at least you want to um, have the camera resting on something, especially because of that really show to slow shutter speed and when you see the kind of uh, the test images I've got at the end of the video um, they're okay but they're a little bit blurred and anything that's moving is blurred and then make sure your shutter is on instantaneous or I go your composition ready to go get the camera locked down and then you just simply press the shutter now I'm not going to press the shutter now because I don't want to waste the film <laughs> and then you would simply wind the film on and then when you get to the end, all you do is go to somewhere with some subdued light, um, take the film out, take the film up, put it in your pocket, and then either send it off to get developed or develop it yourself. And that really is, you know, the, the whole of the beginner's guide to the old distance pocket ensign. Really simple camera to use, takes you back to the basics of film photography. 90 years old, but still a usable camera outside, you know, in sunlight. I probably won't want to use one inside with that. Well, actually saying that, with that slow shutter speed of one, uh, a 25th of a second, using the widest aperture, using the large aperture, you could probably get some nice images inside if you pop the camera up against something. Hmm, interesting. And, uh, but yeah, it's a nice camera. It's a nice bit of British photo history, which we don't particularly have that many. I know they made lots of Kodak cameras in the UK in the various factories, but this one is sold particularly as, as a camera that's made in Great Britain by a British company. Funnily enough, Ensign's factory was bombed during the war. Um, and uh, yeah, they had to move production somewhere else. So, second all that is. So, there we go. That's my beginner's guide to the Ensign uh, all distance pocket camera. Um, if you've got any comments, please stick them down below and uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.